back to the caffeine that you got from last time, because that's your crude caffeine. What does crude mean? Yes. Extracted the caffeine previously last week, so today we're going to be doing sublimation. So, maybe tell me what sublimation is. Yes, Matt. It goes from uh, solid phase to gas phase. Skip it. Ding ding ding, start for you. All right, good. So, <laughs> sublimation is just basically when you go when you have a solid and we make it go directly into the gas phase. Now, in chemistry, there are always a couple of things that don't necessarily make common sense because you think of ice. You know, if you have ice, you put it in your water, it's going to eventually turn into liquid, and then if you heat that water, it would turn into gas. Well, this is we're going directly from a solid phase into a gaseous phase. So we're totally skipping the liquid phase um, in this instance that we're doing here. Um, so one of the notes on there is it says if, it, if a compound doesn't have strong intermolecular attractive forces, then it can sublime. Caffeine is an excellent example of that because it's not very attractive within itself. So therefore, we can sublime it very easily. Okay, so this is a phase diagram. You probably, if you remember from anything from Jim Kim, maybe you might remember seeing this little diagram. So typically what we think of is when we see, like I gave the example of ice going into um, gaseous water. Then, so that would typically go from a solid into the liquid phase, over here into the gaseous phase. However, what we're gonna to do today is we're going to hold the pressure constant. When we hold the pressure constant, if we can get the pressure low enough, then you should see it sublime from this solid phase directly into the vapor phase. So that's going to be the key thing we're going to do here. If you looked at your apparatus, there actually, it says a pipette bulb on here. That is what this edge right here looks like. So by holding, by taking this, we're going to parafilm the top right here, and we're going to have a rubber bulb on this side. This is going to hold the pressure constant. So that way we don't have anything that's going to, it shouldn't, hopefully shouldn't escape into the atmosphere. You shouldn't have any loss of any um, vapors, hopefully. Um, because you have this pressure held constant here. And because the pressure is held constant, then we're going to be able to see the caffeine um, in the bottom of your flask sublime. So, first thing, does anyone not have their caffeine in this flask last week? Did everybody? Okay. Because if you didn't, then if you remember last week, in order to get the caffeine, we had to put, put it in methylene chloride and then boil out the methylene chloride. Um, if you didn't have it in this one, you'd have to dissolve it again in methylene chloride, transfer it to this, and then blow it off of this. So I hope that everybody did. If not, then you're having an extra step. Okay, so these are just a couple of different examples of molecules that were sublime. So the main one that we're focusing on um, is caffeine. So um, you can see with a figure of caffeine, I know y'all haven't gotten to your aromatic rings or anything like that fun yet. Um, but anyway, just take, take my word for it. It sublimes very easily. Okay, so there's a couple of really good points of why we would want to do a sublimation. First of all, when we do sublimation here, we're going to be using a sand bath, and we're going to be using what's called a cold finger. It's just basically a test tube with cold water in it and um, cold ice. Then we don't have to use a solvent, so we're not dissolving your caffeine in anything today. So um, also, we're going to be using, you can use um, low temperatures at a vacuum, but we're not, um, we're going to hold the pressure constant, but we're not going to be using the actual vacuum apparatus at your station today. Um, Hopefully we won't have a loss of material. As I said before, we have the pressure constant and we're going to parafilm everything. You should have a rubber, rubber bulb on the side, so you shouldn't lose any of your caffeine. It shouldn't be any the keyword. Um, and then it says you can use non-volatile impurities that you can separate very easily. So hopefully when we form the crystals um, of your caffeine, it will be the pure caffeine there. Because as we said, caffeine sublimes very easily. A lot of impurities don't, so um, they might would stay either at the bottom of your flask. But either way, hopefully we're going to get purified caffeine crystals at the end of the day. Okay. So basically, this is just going to go over the apparatus that's in your handout if you have it. So this is what it's going to look like. As I said, this is very simple. So it talks about using a cold finger. So this a cold finger. All it is is going to be a test tube. This one is not wrapped in parafilm, but you will wrap it. Um, I'll, I'll take an example. I'll, I'll show this one as an example. I'll wrap up parafilm before we start the experiment. But you will wrap this in parafilm in order to make a tight seal right here. Um, don't put any parafilm right here around this one. We use a rubber bulb 
because if you put paraffin on this and you have a sand bath, this can get very hot and the paraffin could actually melt onto your glass there. So that's why we use a rubber ball um, here. And this is kind of a trick getting it on like this. So uh, take a couple of times and then you'll be able to do it. Yes? Does the caffeine go into the bowl? No, it should not because what we're going to do is this is going to be filled with ice. Um, if you read your handout, which hopefully everybody did, then it says in there that you can actually you add the ice and then using a pipette, just one of these small pipette bowls, suck the water out and keep adding ice. We want this to stay as cold as possible because we're going to heat this point to the pot to the point of where um, it sublimes, and then this is going to be very cold, and your crystals are going to collect on the bottom of this part right here. So um, you shouldn't have any that goes into the rubber bowl. Hopefully, um, it's all going to sublime directly onto the bottom of your tube, and then to get it off, you just have to pull out very carefully. It's going to look like fuzz on the bottom of your uh, cold finger here, so you're going to pull out very carefully. Make sure not to touch your hand to it because those crystals will just flake right off. Um, if your lap bench is under a vent, I would suggest moving to do this step too. Um, so just be very careful when you're doing that. But it should collect at the bottom of that, and then you shouldn't have any of your caffeine loss in there. And I think, yeah, the next, so the next picture is just exactly what we went over. So you can see um, the cold finger is just that test tube there, and then you want to have it set up about where I've got it. I think your lab manual says 10 to 15 millimeters above the bottom. You don't necessarily have to measure it, it's just somewhere about there. You can think about if it was up higher, it would take it longer to get there, and then you could risk also if it vaporized up to a higher point, you could get lost in this um, rubber tube. So the lower it is, just the better and the easier it will be for your crystals to collect on the bottom of the tube. All right, so do you have questions about what we went over about this whole uh, process before we go with the procedure? Everybody clear? Yes. Does this feel a half of can, that's fine. Um, it's going to actually go very quickly. You'd be surprised how quickly, because you're using a very hot sand bath, how quickly the ice is going to turn into water. So you're going to have to constantly be replacing ice, adding little bits of ice in there the whole time. Yes? So when you're replacing ice, what do you do with the water? I mean, you're just going to use a little pipette bulb and you can just put it in a beaker. It's just water, so you're just going to suck out the water. Okay, so this is basically just a summary of the procedure that is on your handout. So first of all, as you uh, you're going to make this apparatus, so to start out, you have all of this should be in your kit. Um, I believe this might either be sitting in your drawer or it'll probably be in your red kit that's in your drawer. So you're just going to fit it like I fitted this test tube in here. You're going to parafilm it around this to get a good tight seal on. You're going to put a rubber bulb on here, and bam, you've got your apparatus. Super simple then. Are you sure that the test tube is 9800? Do you have different test tubes? That's a great point. So it says number 9800 on the side of it, um, and that's going to be the test tube that you're going to want to use. Um, and also, you can, I'll keep this one up here, so you can come up here and take a look at it and see how it's supposed to look um, when you make it. So you're going to, as it says, wrap the parafilm around the outside of the filter ap um, adapter, not on the side arm, though, because the, as I said earlier, that could melt. Um, you're going to put it in your filter flask, and then it says 10 to 15 millimeters. As I said, you can come look and see about how far it needs to be. Um, we're not using the vacuum source, so once again, um, when we are using the pipette bulb, we're doing that to hold the pressure constant so we can get the sublimation to occur. Um, it says about halfway with ice, but as I said, it's going to go very quickly. Um, you're going to put, put your sublimation into your sand bath and heat it to about 200 degrees Celsius. So make sure that you don't crank your sand bath on very high because I know it might not seem like it's getting hot very quickly, but that sand will get hot um, over time and once it gets very hot, it takes it a long time to cool down if you remember doing that. So remember, what do I always say about hot sand? Okay. Right, hot sand looks like cold sand. So once again, don't stick your little fingers into it. Let me see if I can show you an example. Okay, so this is a good example of what not to do. Do not stick this into the sand bath because it's going to turn into a Frito-looking thing at the bottom of it. And you see the sand right here has solidified on the bottom of it. So be careful. Don't, don't stick this in the hot sand. It's very hot. It's melted it, and there is no coming back for this one. Fortunately, the thermometer still works, but yeah, use common sense before, please. <laughs> What other things should we be careful about when we're using sandbags? Let's review. Tell me. I'm doing an experiment. What should I not do with the sandbags? Spill it. Okay. Like, it hurts. Don't heat quickly. Not plug it directly into the outlet. Where do I start with the variance? High to low or low to high? Low to high.
eyes off of her. Because that's where the, the thing is going to be. That's where your flask is, right? Yeah. The bottom is going to be hotter. So if you're at the bottom and it's at 200 degrees and nothing's happening, it's obviously because the pop is not 200 degrees, right? And be careful when you're using your apparatus because this one, all you're going to really do, be doing is you can also do this at your station, but you can have this sitting in here. But if, if you want to, you can move it around, especially if your caffeine is on the sides, you can easily use the sidearm to move it around um, and tilt it. But be careful, do not tilt the water in this, um, the cold water, and let it pour into the hot sand because it could, as um, Sonia was saying, it could crack the sand and it could cause it to make a big pop or something like that happen. So we don't want anybody to lose that. So. All right, and so as I said, at the bottom of it, you're gonna take out, once you see a lot of this, you're gonna see a lot of little fuzzy crystals on the bottom of it. Um, a good rule of thumb is when you think you're done, when you have enough crystals, wait five more minutes then, um, because that way you're gonna be able to get all of the caffeine um, out of it. Okay. All right, so as I said, um, when it's complete, remove the apparatus and allow it to cool. Um, try to get all the ice out from the cold finger, remove it from the flask. So you're gonna take this out of the hot sand bath, it's gonna be really hot, and just let it sit there on your bench for a few minutes and let it cool down. Um, and as I said, do not just touch your fingers around to the crystals because common sense tells you that you'll take the crystals one off. All right, so then our goal of this is we want you to, um, I would like for you to get it off, get your caffeine crystals off. Okay, so you're going to take your crystals that you scrape off. I want you to get a final weight of your caffeine. And as you say. I've been trying to is to take the weight of the empty, the flask again, because the amount of caffeine that you scrape off Take the pipette bulb off and remember how you got a weight from this last time. So if you take a weight of this, how will I know how much caffeine I have? Subtract it from last week's weight. Assume whatever is not in here is in here. So do you have questions about the lab? All you do is you're going to take it off with these scissors, cut off the piece, and just wrap it around this right here. While it's on the floor? 